Hi, I'm Chris Porter from IBM Quantum, and I'm absolutely thrilled to talk about the recent announcement of the Nobel Prize in Physics for 2025. It's a topic near and dear to my heart, superconducting circuits. This year's Nobel Prize in Physics was awarded to John Clark, Michelle Deveret, and John Martinez for the discovery of macroscopic quantum mechanical tunneling and energy quantization in an electric circuit. That might sound abstract, but it's the foundation of how superconducting qubits, the kind used in IBM's quantum computers, work today. Let's unpack what they discovered and why their work was so groundbreaking and how it's still changing the world today, shaping the future of what's next in computing. Starting with a silicon chip, they fabricated two superconducting wires that cross each other. They're separated by a thin insulating layer. The wires were then connected to a DC current source, similar to attaching a battery, but with very precise control. This setup is called a current-biased Josephson junction. The junction was placed inside a copper tube, and the whole thing was cooled down to a few millikelvin, cold enough to make thermal fluctuations negligible. In a superconductor, electrons pair off to form Cooper pairs. These pairs behave differently from unpaired electrons. While individual electrons can have different energies and momenta, Cooper pairs in a superconductor collectively condense into one macroscopic quantum state. Let me repeat that because it's important. All the current carrying electrons in the entire superconducting sample are in the same state. This macroscopic quantum state on each superconductor is characterized by what's called a phase, denoted phi. The theory behind this is not new. It's called the theory of superconductivity, or BCS theory, in honor of Bardeen, Cooper, and Schrieffer. They also received the Nobel Prize in 1972 for work they did in 1957. In 1962, Brian Josephson predicted that two of these superconductors, separated by a thin barrier, would allow individual Cooper pairs to tunnel through. And he also predicted how this tunneling current would behave. His predictions were soon confirmed, and he received the Nobel Prize in 1973. Moreover, in the late 1970s, Anthony Leggett proposed that these circuits could display not only the microscopic tunneling of Cooper pairs, but macroscopic quantum effects, where the collective variable of the whole circuit behaves quantum mechanically. And this is where the current-biased junction becomes really important. When you bias the junction with a current, it follows two simple equations called the Josephson relations, which tie the current and voltage to the superconducting phase phi. Using these, one finds that the energy of a current-biased Josephson junction depends on phi according to this tilted washboard potential. Note that this picture is not the energy of a particle as a function of the position along the junction, it's the energy of the junction as a function of the phase difference between the two macroscopic superfluids on each superconducting wire. The washboard becomes more tilted as the bias current increases. When the bias current is below a critical value at zero temperature, the system sits in a valley and there's no voltage. Push the current higher and the valleys disappear. And the system rolls downhill, creating a finite voltage that can be measured experimentally. At zero temperature and current below the critical current, classical physics says that the system should be stuck in that valley. But quantum mechanics says it can tunnel out of the valley. And because it is the phase of all the Cooper pairs that's changing in this tunneling, that's macroscopic quantum tunneling. And this is where Clark, Deveret, and Martinez made history. By biasing the junction just below its critical current, they observed spontaneous switching to the voltage state at temperatures too low for thermal activation to explain the escapes. They showed that at higher temperatures, the escaping charge decreased with decreasing temperature, consistent with charge escaping the wells due to thermal activation. But they also identified a crossover to a temperature independent regime at low temperature, consistent with macroscopic quantum tunneling of the junction's phase coordinate. And if this isn't astonishing enough, get this. In some regimes, like current below the critical and very low temperature, inside the well of that washboard potential, there are quantized energy levels. That is, there are discrete states of the junction that don't have enough energy to escape. 
By gently driving the junction with microwaves, the Nobel laureates performed resonant activation and spectroscopy of these states. They saw escapes from specific excited levels, and the level spacing matched what the theory of quantum mechanics predicts. That's the energy quantization in an electric circuit part of the citation. Why does this matter? It proved that macroscopic systems can show quantum behavior, such as tunneling in discrete energy levels. This is amazing on its own, but even more exciting, it has real applications. For example, the superconducting qubits that power today's quantum computers. There are differences, of course, since superconducting qubits are engineered to maximize coherence, minimize noise, and allow precise control. And the two quantum states that encode 0 and 1 are separated by an energy gap that we can design, and we use microwaves to control their quantum state on demand. But when John Clark was asked what related problems he and his colleagues had left for future scientists to solve, he cited quantum computing. In fact, about 70% of IBM quantum leaders and researchers studied with or worked closely with one of these three laureates. Our very own Olivia Lanes is even John Clark's academic grandchild. In a way, they are our academic forefathers, without whom much of the field would not exist. This pioneering work has already profoundly influenced our world. And through quantum computing, it will continue to change the world for decades to come. And we owe so much of it to these three pioneers. But don't forget what may be the best part. You can use qubits based on this research today. Follow links in the description below to try using IBM quantum computers. Investigate Bell's theorem, explore sample-based algorithms, or just learn the basics. We hope to see you there.